Sonic the Hedgehog is a major motion picture based on Sonic the Hedgehog, the video game and multimedia brand. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was just released in April 2022 after an aggressive marketing campaign and a unanimous sense of excitement from fans of the first movie. It features more characters, more locations, and more iconography from the source material than the first film did, and that's what excited me the most leading up to its release. Oh, and if you're new here, welcome. I'm that one disfigured guy who draws, animates, changes his name every once in a while, disappears from this platform for years at a time and never stops rambling about pop culture that I like. In case you really don't know who I am, I think it's worth pointing out that I am an enormous Sonic fan. He's my favorite fictional character and a small handful of his games have had a lasting impact on my life even to this day. The cartoons, the comics, the merchandise, even that one Japanese direct-to-video special have all supplemented this little guy's legacy and I've enjoyed just about all of it in some way, shape, or form. Sonic's personality, aesthetic, and cast of characters make for some of the most timeless and charming entertainment for all ages, no matter how mixed his library of content might be in terms of actual quality. All of this exhaustive build-up is to say that when Sonic made his way to the big screen for the first time, I was terrified. This could very well be the highest amount of mainstream exposure that Sonic has ever had. After a total of six years between the film's announcement and its eventual release, including a change in production companies, hellish post-production, and a general stigma toward video game movie adaptations, would this curiously live-action version of Sonic live up to the character's legacy? My god, it's been two years and I still cannot wrap my mind around why anyone thought this boring, uninspired, generic flick was even decent. Did we even watch the same movie? Do y'all seriously enjoy watching Sonic ride around in the passenger seat of a car with a C-list white guy actor spouting random pop culture references the whole time? I'm sure y'all really got a kick out of seeing Sonic grow up on Earth and never take any of that time to elusively explore the country at super speed. Nah, let's just keep him grounded in one spot his entire life while he worships this one random dude and his wife. That's super characteristic of Sonic. He needs a regular fucking person Person to drive him to San Francisco because Sonic, the fastest thing alive with a heart for adventure, does not know how to get there himself. And he's lived on Earth for 10 years. What is he even doing? Sonic dunks on Donut Lord's career ambitions because they require him to move away from his hometown. Makes perfect sense, right? Just stay right where you are. Don't try new things. Don't follow your dreams or else you might hurt someone else's feelings or something. Oh, and finally, let's make sure Sonic is tightly locked in one place by the end of the movie, too. And now he's Cyclops' adopted child. Give me a break with this nonsense. There is nothing good about this story at all. Certainly nothing that reminds me even remotely of Sonic's other media. There are only a few things that are somewhat okay about this movie, one being Sonic's vocal performance by Ben Schwartz, a few decent, passable action scenes, and Jim Carrey being Jim Carrey as Robotnik. I'm not exaggerating when I say that this is one of my favorite portrayals of Eggman in anything, including the games. That is one W I will absolutely give this movie. But even a standout 90s ass performance by Carrie is not quite enough to save this lukewarm, mediocre schlock. Besides, what does this movie even accomplish as entertainment purely for children? It teaches kids not to go anywhere outside of their comfort zones, I guess? Long-term commitments for the sake of personal ambitions are no good, I guess. Cut that shit out. Every Sonic thing ever has been made with kids in mind, but that doesn't mean that they can't be universally enjoyable. The the best all-ages media doesn't insult anyone's intelligence. They can deliver all sorts of ideas in layered ways so that multiple age groups can get something out of it. Even if the creators are truly only catering to one age group, that's okay too, if the creators honestly care about their audience. That extra effort is what separates patronizing garbage with high-quality work that stands the test of time. Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, is patronizing garbage, with next to no regard for the nuance of what makes the best Sonic games, comics, and TV shows so appealing. I haven't mentioned the way Sonic looks in this movie until now because when I'm judging the story, writing, characters, theming, sound design, music, and the visual identity of the movie as a whole, that doesn't even matter. Sonic's model could have been ripped directly from the cutscenes in the video games, and this movie would still be one of the worst entries in a subgenre I thought was killed off a long time ago. I grew up during a time when this kind of movie was everywhere, and consciously notice 
Ghost when live-action, CGI, hybrid, nostalgic cash-grab family films began to phase out. In fact, I can tell you exactly when that happened, and it's when the third Smurfs movie just said fuck it and went completely animated, like this movie should have done. Why the hell are we now once again fascinated with the idea of an otherworldly cartoon character being flung into the real world and stripping them of anything interesting about where they come from? Why is this acceptable as a Sonic the Hedgehog movie? I still stand by the opinion that it's one of the lamest movies I've seen in recent years. And you might be wondering right now, why didn't I just tell you all of that? Why didn't I spend all this time recapping my negative thoughts about the first movie? I already got ratioed to Helen back on Twitter for that, so why do this all over again? I just feel the need to reiterate my perspective so that everyone watching this knows where I'm coming from when I tell you that Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is one of the greatest pieces of Sonic media to come out in the past decade. I know, I'm just as surprised as you are. I honestly loved this movie. It's kind of insane how much better than the original Sonic movie this ended up being, and I mainly attribute that to the idea that this movie is not afraid to actually be a Sonic movie. You know what I mean? Like, all of the lame pop culture reference shit is still there, and the whole experience is not perfect. In fact, there are some horribly noticeable blemishes in this, but overall, the movie is comfortable in its own skin. It knows what it is, and it does its very very best to deliver the kind of experience that fans of the Sonic games would want to expect out of something like this. This is more or less what I always imagined a Sonic movie being like when I was a kid. And do I still think it's mega lame that this is a live action film instead of an animated one? Absolutely, yes, I still do. But lord have mercy, the artists involved in making this took what they had and made the absolute best thing they could out of it. The plot of Sonic 2 is pretty much what you think it's gonna be if you saw the trailers. Eggman is back, he's got Knuckles helping him, Sonic is back, he's got Tails helping him, Sonic and Tails versus Knuckles and Eggman, and the shitty human parents are unfortunately still here. After watching most of the promotional material for this film myself, I have not felt this much like a movie was telegraphed right in front of me before I even saw it since Spider-Man Homecoming. But of course, something that could not have been halfway spoiled for me was the characterizations of Tails and Knuckles. I was pretty scared that they would be written like crap like Sonic was in the first movie, and sometimes is in this one, but I can breathe a sigh of relief knowing that Tails and Knuckles are the most entertaining characters in this movie. Tails acts and feels more or less exactly how I would have expected him to, and I can partially credit that toward his extremely good vocal performance by Colleen O'Shaughnessy, who voices Tails in the video games. And I think that's fantastic, to see voice actors rather than just screen actors and celebrities get poster recognition in a movie like this, that's a huge step forward, and it's the best of both worlds as far as the voices themselves go, you get to listen to Tails with his in-game voice intact, and Sonic without it. <laughs> And Knuckles, ugh, yes. This is the best Knuckles that we have had probably ever since I became a Sonic fan. Like, I personally jumped on board the same year that Sonic Heroes came out, and that was the last time that I could really respect Knuckles as a character. He kind of just became so flanderized and lost in every game since then over the past 15 plus years, and it's amazing to see him go back to his roots as an intimidating rival character for Sonic. And every set piece involving him is just spectacular. He has wonderful chemistry with Robotnik and, of course, with Sonic and Tails in the inevitable final act of the film. All in all, I say that Tails and Knuckles elevate Sonic's character in this movie. Because, yeah, we're still dealing with an interpretation of Sonic that is extremely childlike and has a lot to learn and needs a father figure for some godforsaken reason, but when he's around these two, he feels more like the Sonic that I've always known. It's a more inspired take on the character, and I believe leave this part of his arc far more than I ever did in the original. The thematic message that this movie is trying to sell, I believe, totally lands. Like, they actually thought this through. It feels totally at home as the kind of lesson that would be taught by a piece of Sonic media. In fact, there's some pretty overtly shonen-esque power of friendship horse shit going on here, and I honestly just love seeing that in a mainstream Hollywood movie. I don't think I even need to say how good Jim Carrey is as Eggman 
once again. He was the best part of the first movie, and he is one of the best parts of this movie. It's possible that this could very well be his last acting role before he retires, and if that's true, then hey, I just gotta say. Jim Carrey's contributions to films from my childhood personally are invaluable, and to see now what could be his last role is something that is reflective of my childhood, even now as I'm an adult. That's something special. Also, I think of a massive shout out to Agent Stone, played once again by Lee Majdub, who clearly from the very beginning has had a lot of passion for this role, this being probably the best original character to come out of these movies. It's a long-standing tradition for Eggman to have funny sidekicks, and this might be one of my favorites. In fact, a scene involving him was one of the only times in the movie that I genuinely cracked up out loud at the use of a licensed song in the soundtrack. And we're gonna use that example to segue into all the shit I didn't like in this movie. These producers have seriously got to cut it out with the licensed music. Having every song in the damn movie just be something that we already know of from popular culture is gonna throw me off, especially in something like this. It just takes away from the Sonic-esque identity that I was just praising the movie for. In fact, the soundtrack as a whole is bland as hell, just like the first movie. Pop culture references galore too, most of them coming from Sonic's mouth. He has never been that type of character in anything else. I don't know why they're trying to still push that now. I also hope that before I perish and leave this world forever, I get to witness the day in which humanity stops cracking up at the mere acknowledgement of something that exists in real life as comedy. Sonic saying this oh, great. The Winter Soldier. isn't funny. It doesn't make me laugh. It just makes me think, oh yeah, we're talking about a different movie now. Okay? Y'all ever played Gex for PlayStation? I thought that taught us this lesson already. An over-reliance on references and licensed music is basically Hollywood shorthand for lazy filler writing. I think it's lame for any movie to have this shit to such a degree, especially something from a character that I admire so much, you know? And of course, last and probably least, the human characters, man. I don't give a shit about Donut Lord. I could care less about his sister-in-law's wedding. However, thankfully, their role in this film is much more minor compared to the original. The only trade-off being the moments where they are on screen are some of the most insufferable parts of this. Like, I'm talking even worse than the first movie bad. There is a specific point, I want to say around halfway through the runtime, where the movie just dies for 15 minutes. Like, it has this perfect go-to-the-bathroom or fast-forward it type of moment that I never want to see again. It has practically nothing to do with Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, or Eggman, and those of you who have seen the movie will know exactly what scene I'm talking about. And honestly, in addition to that, there are at least one or two other sequences in the movie that just made me groan in the very same way that I did in the first film. So even though I like this movie overall, I do still want to make it clear that the personality of the first film is not completely dead here. It's still present here. It's just not as overbearing and is usually surpassed by the amount of extremely cool Sonic-centric stuff that happens here. I think it's pretty safe to say that visually, this is a pretty substantial improvement over the first film. We've had the chance to expand upon the aesthetic, or lack thereof, from the original, and as far as I can tell, this one didn't have any crazy production trouble outside of the whole being filmed during the pandemic thing. We're still looking at the same boring-ass real world from the first movie, but the environments are so much more interesting this time. I can tell an honest effort was made to place Sonic in locations that felt like the closest things to his distinct level motifs that you can really do in a live action movie. This was never ever going to be the ideal medium for this character, but I think it makes the most of what it's working with this time. On that note, I think I've finally gotten used to Sonic's hyper-rendered character design. He actually looks better than he did in the first movie. He's bluer, his eyes shine brighter, and because this movie was made specifically with this model in mind, unlike the last movie, Sonic's animations and expressions are great. I must stress that I think his in-game design by the Japanese Sonic team is at least 10 times better than Sonic could ever look with realistic fur and blue arms, but what we have here is more than acceptable for what it is. And speaking from that perspective, Tails and Knuckles look awesome. I think Tails is appropriately cute, and Knuckles' bulkier silhouette is a much better take on what the ill-fated Sonic boom seem to be going for. Makes him look super imposing as a sort of secondary bad guy. I can totally see why kids would want 
plushies or figures of them, even though uh, the regular Sonic design is right there, guys. Do us all a favor and get your parents to buy one of him, too, so he's not taking up so much space on the shelves and Jack Pacific will make more deep cuts like Blaze and Jet. The action in this movie is a lot of fun. There's much more of it than in the first movie. It takes place in a variety of cool spots, and I'm so thrilled to say how much it all felt like something out of the best cutscenes from the games. For that, I have to shout out quite possibly the most important artist working on Sonic content in North America. Tyson Hess, in addition to rescuing the character designs for both films, was a storyboard supervisor on Sonic 2. Tyson's experience with comics and animation, including multiple other Sonic projects from the past, make him a powerful force for good in what could easily have been a less exciting collection of set pieces. Even if we're not necessarily looking to the games for comparison, these scenes stand out tremendously well on their own. I always love seeing thrilling action sequences made for all ages. Sonic has been one of the genre's best examples of that ever since his conception, and seeing this brand new mainstream Hollywood movie properly carry on that legacy at some parts is no doubt the greatest thing about it. Alright, I can't dance around it anymore, let's talk about the ending. Go see the movie and then come back to this part, or you can just skip to uh, the, whatever the number you're seeing on screen is right now, because, uh, uh, yeah, oh my goodness, this is one of the greatest finales in a Sonic product that I think I've ever seen? I would kill for the animation and storyboarding of the video games to even be half this good now. Remember that no fast cutscene in the beginning of Sonic Unleashed? Well, imagine that level of quality, but for like 20 minutes? Maybe more? I don't know. I was lost in how much fun I was having. We've all seen the Death Egg robot in the trailers, but the way that it comes to be is incredibly creative. Eggman basically becoming Super Eggman for all intents and purposes, and Sonic Tails and Knuckles were working together to stop him, it was all boarded and animated so fucking well. And the trailers definitely didn't show me this, Super Sonic, <laughs> oh man! You can tell without a shadow of a doubt that Sonic fans made the ending of this movie. It's glorious. It's fucking epic. I was pretty mixed on this movie before the last 20 minutes or so of it. I thought that it was fine, definitely an improvement over the original, but not as amazing as it probably could have been, and then it just becomes as amazing as it could have been. And by the end, it's like, shit dude, Sonic feels like himself now. Like Sonic's origin story that has lasted two movies in which he has been this insufferable little shitlord. Now I like him. Now I am accepting of movie Sonic as he is because he reminds me of the Sonic that I grew up with. I didn't even mind it all that much that Donut Lord and his wife just show up and insert themselves into what otherwise could have been a 100% perfect scene. But like it's fine because even at the end of the day I'm kind of all right with the approach they took with this. Like, fine, whatever, I'll allow it. Sonic can have parents now, I guess, if that means that he can be this badass when Tails and Knuckles are around. Now it can feel more like he's fully himself in the obvious next movie that's already in development. And speaking of the next movie, I feel really silly for ever being so critical of the movie character design for Sonic at this point, because not only was I going nuts to see that design go super, but I went even more nuts to see Sonic Something that was more or less already spoiled for me just a few hours before I walked into this movie. But you know what? I freaked out anyway, damn it. I would say that I'm ready to scrutinize the hell out of this upcoming movie as it's very likely to adapt my favorite Sonic story from the games ever. But the sheer amount of fun and excitement that I was having with this movie by that point filled me with something that I have not felt toward a Sonic product in oh so long, and that is optimism. I feel optimistic for Sonic. This movie smashed the landing. I could feel the passion from those who made it, and it reminded me of the passion that went into every single really kick-ass Sonic thing that's come out lately. Sonic Mania and Team Sonic Racing were solid games. The musical Symphony made me tear up twice. The IDW comics have the best writing I've ever experienced with Sonic. The writer of those comics is now moving on to write the story for the next Sonic video game by Sonic Team 
game, taking their sweet ass time to polish said video game? Sure, Sonic Forces was a turd, and yeah, I fucking hated the first Sonic movie, but you know, man, it seems like we're in a pretty good spot right now, you know? I'm trying my very best to stay hands off when it comes to talking about Sonic Frontiers, but I can definitely say I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to whatever's next in the Sonic cinematic universe, I guess. I never thought I'd say something like that, but here I am. As much of an overall mixed bag as Sonic the Hedgehog 2 the movie was, it still made me the happiest that I have been as a Sonic fan in what's got to be over 11 years by now. It's messy, it's cringy, it's got a lot of stuff about it that sucks, but hey. I'd say the rest of my favorite Sonic content out there is more or less just the same. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has been my review of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Sonic the Hedgehog 1. This has been your favorite hypernasal 26-year-old man-child, and I guess I'll go hide away for another couple months now until Sonic Frontiers comes out, so I'll see you guys then. Or maybe sooner. I have no idea.